see any agreement today? Oh, they'll get there. They'll work it out. Radio, do you want me to just break into song? Like the rest of the country, Federal Parliament is starting to return to normal this week. Honourable Members, I present agreement for members to contribute remotely. While there are still constraints on just how many staff can come to Canberra, and the building is still closed to the public, there are more MPs and Senators here as border closures and lockdowns ease. Why does the Prime Minister always go missing when leadership is required and never take responsibility for anything? Yeah. I thought this was question time, not sledge time, Mr Speaker, but if that's how the Leader of the Opposition wants to kick off the week, well, that's up to him, Mr Speaker. A busier parliament creates its own tensions, particularly in the Nationals' party room, which for two days has been debating the PM's proposed climate change plan. David Littleproud is the Deputy Nationals' leader. He's on the line. Deal or no deal? Uh, no deal yet. Currently, it is a no. Uh, we'll continue to have discussions and guys, I've got work to do, so thanks very much. We hope that uh, in the next uh, short period of time we can come to some sort of decision within the room and through a, a proper process. After 18 months of COVID-19 seeming to dominate all and amid a flood of announcements about opening up the country again, there was only one issue consuming political oxygen in Canberra today the spectre of the Nationals apparently holding the government and the country to ransom over climate change, though that is not quite how they see it. We will make a Nationals decision and we won't be held hostage to what other people may wish. Mr George, just wondering about a 2030 target, a mid-term target, would you agree to double that from 26 to 50 per cent? I think that's highly unlikely. <laughs> to be clear, the Coalition's policy now, though it has not been made public, is based on new or contested technologies offering emissions reductions without any price being set for carbon. The policy, which the PM hopes to take to the International Climate Talks in Glasgow in just two weeks' time, will forecast that we will do better than the 26 to 28 per cent emissions reductions by 2030 it promised at the last election. So we don't need to upgrade our ambition which most other countries are doing. At the last election, we rejected a 45 per cent emissions reduction target put forward by those opposite. And it wasn't just us who rejected it, Mr Speaker. The Australian people rejected it. They supported our policy of 26 to 28 per cent to meet that target and beat that target. The Nationals argue the cost of doing something about emissions reductions is only something that affects the regions. The junior coalition party has reportedly been offered tens of billions of dollars in regional spending in return for agreeing to a commitment to reaching net zero by 2050. Nationals cabinet ministers were openly claiming last week that the government's policy would be determined in the Nationals party room rather than, well, the cabinet. Why is the Prime Minister not in the room where Australia's climate change policy is being decided? Thank you, Mr Speaker. The government's decision on the government's commitments for Australia in relation to COP26 will be made by the government in Cabinet, Mr Speaker, in Cabinet. That's where it will be made. That's where these decisions are made. All members of the government understand that. The opposition is arguing that an emissions reduction target that is not legislated means little, knowing full well that the government does not want to legislate, lest it reveal its divisions in any vote. Some of you might even write wasn't Scott Morrison clever to drag the coalition to this position? But unless it's legislated, it can't be taken seriously. But Labor also faces questions about its own position. If uh, I was uh, going to Glasgow as uh, the leader of Australia, I would have had very clearly a long time ago a clear position worked out for Australia going forward. And when it's announced, you'll all know it. The Prime Minister finally confirmed on Friday that he would be going to Glasgow. Earlier, he'd suggested spending another two weeks in quarantine could dissuade him from attending. But on Friday, New South Wales Premier Dominic Perrottet upped the ante on opening international borders. He announced that people returning from overseas into New South Wales from November 1 would not have to quarantine. Hotel quarantine will be a thing of the past. The federal government is responsible for quarantine under the Constitution, but effectively handed over the management of it to the states last year. And that means in practice it's actually the states who decides who comes here and the circumstances in which they come. We're going to get tourists back as quickly as possible. We, from, a, from, from, a, from, a, 
from a New South Wales perspective, from a New South Wales perspective, we're not going to discriminate. The federal government's somewhat limited role now appears to be requiring incoming travellers to do a COVID test before boarding a plane and by controlling the issue of visas to prioritise people returning to Australia. This is about Australian residents and citizens first. The Commonwealth Government has made no decision to allow other visa holders, skilled visa holders, student visa holders, uh, international visitors to come into Australia under these arrangements. They are decisions for the Commonwealth Government, as the Premier and I know. The borders, national and international, are starting to come down. But as they do, Australia still finds itself facing barriers to match the rest of the world's pledges on climate change. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.